Hello, welcome along. It's time for another Morning Post, brought to you by The Racing Post and sponsored by William Hill. Happy Saturday, everyone out there. The rain is playing havoc. Three meetings for punters to get stuck into. We'll go down our panellists and our guests, of course, and see what they make of that. Betting opportunities are plenty, though, still, and we'll open up the trading floor for you as well. This is an interactive show, so it's a great chance for you to get your voice heard. All you've got to do is, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, Get that thumb up, like and subscribe. It's that simple. Chat bar will open up. We'll try and give you a shout as we go along. In fact, this is a fantastic show to get your voice heard, I think. And uh, so much coming up, of course. Aintree next week. Small matter of a Grand National. But then the Craven meeting, the Guineas is on the horizon. We've been talking about that anti post on the show for a couple of weeks as well. But let's hone in to exactly what's coming up for you and introduce... Who joins me on this Saturday morning? Maddie Playl with her tipping hat back on. Yeah. Well, tipping hat was on last week, Dave, when oh, I was in your chair. I, so you've, <laughs> you've taken T minus five seconds to tell us that you were the that's, winning nap. That's like getting my trump out, isn't it? After timing. No, not quite. But um, yeah, uh, good to be back. It's like musical chairs in here. It's that funny time of year, Paul Keeley, who joins us back on the Morning Post. It is. I haven't been on for a while. Yeah. Uh, nice to be here. In a little bit of form myself, thankfully. Are you now? Yeah. This is two trumpets. It's like we're going to have a <laughs> brass band all of a sudden. Yeah. If only I have one to go. pear shape now, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You've jinxed it. It is that funny time of year, isn't it? Before we go up to William Mill and introduce the trader of the day. What do we make of this? Now, a lot of people get angsty, don't they, about the fact we have a Lincoln after Cheltenham. Because of leap year in Easter, it was very close this year. Everyone's head was blown by all of a sudden having to look for soft ground. Uh, flat horses, and then this basically goes back onto the all weather. But thank goodness for the all weather, right? Well, all of a sudden, us. it looks it's, wise. It saved us this week. I mean, Carl Burke made a great point when he contacted the Racing Post uh, earlier in the earlier in the week and said, like, you know, what happens after the Lincoln? We just flat flat turf racing just disappears, doesn't it? Uh, why not move the Lincoln back a bit, run it just before the Craven, and and get going there? It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, and it is a weird one that we pussy foot around a movable holiday that we don't need to. Just all these big meetings just have their place in the calendar, and that's it. The only the only race that routinely run on Easter Monday is the Irish National, and who cares whether that's two days after the British one or six days before it? Doesn't actually matter. Do you think he's going to carry on for the next hour like this? Do you think he's he's going to get it all out of him? No, today? I just, I just Easter's thought, got his. I just thought Carl Buck talked a hell of a lot of sense. What's the point of having the Lincoln, and then we, we, we've had what two turf meetings since? But there's been so much rain, yeah. thank goodness, yeah. that this is how it's played out. They'd have all been lost. Oh, We've yeah, had Nottingham's no, no, this gone. Is, this this Kempt is a cracking card. Yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic card. No curry today, of course. We're hoping Leopardstown is on tomorrow. We'll be getting an Irish angle for you. Let's go along with the show then. Uh, it's that funny time of year, but we're going to find you some winners. Don't worry about that. And we open up the floor as ever. The markets move in front of our eyes. Jamie McBride joins us from the William Mill floor. How are you, Jay? Yep, yeah, very good. Thanks, Dave. Yep, yeah, I'd agree with Paul. It is a really good card at Kempton. Nice mixture of uh, some good handicaps and some uh, nice three-year-olds, I'm sure, as well. And Kempton's one of those lovely tracks, isn't it, on the old world? We've got Chelmsford as well. We'll be talking about that. Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien honing in on a race there. And uh, it's just a lovely track, isn't it? Yeah, you get some really nice horses start their careers at Kempton. I do think, as much as, you know, like any track that's round a bend and on the old weather, you know, draw comes into play. Of course it does, but I do think you get to see some really nice performances and it's a it's a quite a fair track i'd say favorite all weather track um i've not actually been to a kempton all weather meeting but i do like watching it um not sure maybe do you have a favorite all weather uh, track? no i'm not a massive i'm in general not a massive fan of all weather racing but then i'm not a massive fan of low class racing and a lot of it is i actually really do enjoy it when there's good good cards today on the you can't complain i enjoy can you? it yeah. i enjoy it i i i thought um the change in the handicaps to uh, all weather finals day to handicaps was a fantastic. You loved that really competitive yeah. race in there. Yeah, I, I was getting stuck in there every race. Like, you know, I yeah. loved it. Like, you know, competitive cards, and we've got a comp competitive card here. Where the best horse. handicapped horse wins rather than the best horse is what we like oh, sometimes. Hopefully. Those puzzles, absolutely. I'm a huge all weather fan. I know Jamie McBride is as well. Right, that's how we set fair for the next hour or so. Stick with us. We're going to preview plenty. Let's have a look at exactly what's in your paper today in the Racing Post. If you pick it up, a digital members club, of course, this is what is available to you. And it's that kind of heady mix, isn't it? Absolutely, at the moment. What have we got on the front page then? King and Queens of Kempton, I believe, is the front page. Let's get it up if we can. Don't forget, guys, thumbs up, like and subscribe. That's what it's all about. Let's see you up there. And uh, after the paper roundup, we're going to tease you something for the National as well, which is coming up, and the big Sunday read as well. Here it is. 
as if by magic. Uh, Oshin Murphy, of course, two rides at Lingfield yesterday, two winners. And, uh, oh, there they all are. Okay, who's on page two? Oh, it's David Carr, broadband. It's teaming up. It's teaming with top jockeys on a balmy day at Kempton. Yes, all the big boys and girls are going there. Great read that as ever from David. Good to see him on page two. Looks forward to a host of big name rides. Uh, here we go. There you go. And a nice little graphic for you as well. James doll has been riding well, hasn't he? Really, really well. William Buick, of course, we saw him at, uh, successful on Maydan World Cup night. They are indeed all there, aren't they? Daniel Muscat, former champion or weather jockey as well. Some juicy stats and profitability for you to get stuck into. Ah, this is interesting. Alan King, hoping handily treated Tritonic can strike after a wasted trip to Scotland. Delve in there. Kills will be giving you more of a word on that as we go on on the show. But again, really interesting stuff. Max McNeil's floppy jumpers, I want to say. They've got a really good record of going back on the flat. Ah, now he comes back. What's the one horse that Willie Mullins would like to train, I was asked yesterday, that he doesn't? It's got to be LA Francais, isn't it? And he's back. In a, well, he's got five rivals to take on. I think it's about 115. The Grand Steep prep should be a penalty kick. Don't miss that. You get that on Sky Sports Racing. George, I'll be disappointed if he's beaten. You and me both. Uh, ah, Johnny Deneen, who'll be joining us a little bit later on the show. The only way is Essex for O'Brien's Capulet. Great headline, whoever did that. Uh, wager of the weekend is indeed Capulet then. We saw him at Newmarket last back end. Massive chance in the Cardinal Stakes. Price-wise this week, Keith Melrose, betting editor. Kent can make hay in the Surrey under Buick. What's we've got? Adelaide's Duke to Kent and Circuit Breaker. So there we go, giving you free premium content here with the price wise action. Tom Segal having a well earned rest before the National comes up. Talking of the National, right, it's going to be feverish, isn't it? Basically, we've been talking about it since, I don't know, Christmas sort of time, looking at the market. It is hardened, this market now, but one senses it's going to come alive in the next week. And a horse that's got a right old chance, he's been plotted up all week. We're going to hear shortly about Kitty's Light. Got this amount of money and I want to buy a share in a racehorse for you. If you want, I'll, I'll sell you a half share in Kitty's Light. So fingers crossed, he has a little bit of luck and away to go. You know, I knew that that was probably his race. If there was ever going to be a big race, it was going to be the idol that suited him. You know, he's got good experience in big races, never usually lets us down. It rides the wrong with that 365 from, from a couple of years earlier. You know, he's just a good horse and looks like a national type. You know, the horse they ended up buying in memory of their mother, so to spend more time together, to go racing together, and what a brilliant horse to, to have done that with. What will be will be, but um, you've got to soak it in while, while it's here. What will be will be. Great to see, isn't it? And uh, you're going to be able to learn all about that freakish story. In the paper tomorrow, it's the big read, Christian Williams, uh, of course, and uh, at 9 a.m. tomorrow, go to our YouTube channel. He gives us an exclusive interview about, well, the rise to fame of Kitty's Light. Uh, just before I go up to Jamie McBride about this, he is a freak, isn't he? I remember years ago being in this studio, and one of our producers who was here at the time said, I've, I've been down to see Christian Williams. He's got this three-year-old that he reckons is going to be a national horse. We were like, what are you on about? And it was Kitty's, of course. And so we feel like we've got an attachment to this horse, really. Yeah, I've been down there as well, spent some time with Christian, and um, he was incredibly generous and opened up. And obviously it's a tough time that his, his family have been through, well publicised, um, so he's got the whole of the racing community behind him. But yeah, Kitty's like, by Nathaniel, of course, <laughs> sire of Enable. So it's just remarkable what he's gone on to achieve. And yeah, hopefully all is coming to the boil for a, a good national bid. Yeah, we're going to be back next Saturday, Kiel's doing a runner-by-runner runner guide. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm nearly ready. I mean, is Aintree ready? That's the worry, isn't it? Ooh. That's the worry. Well, it, mean, yeah, it I won't mean, be great for kitties, will it, if yeah, it's bloody? No, I mean, they've got tons of rain forecast early this week. I, I always worry when these big meetings don't stick out a going stick reading in advance. <laughs> I haven't seen one at all. Don't go there, because we know say. the last time that happened. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it's going to be bottomless. It is, you know, I don't think there's any doubt about it. It will start on very, very deep ground. Mm. Uh, and, you know, if you get a couple of dry days, it'll just be sticky. Uh, it's going to be hard work. You're going to have to handle it. Not sure Kitty does, but not sure. I'm not sure a lot of them do. Well, that, here's the thing. We, you know, there's a lovely piece in the paper. What happened the last time Heffy was mentioned? In, I, I remember the Red Marauder year vividly. Mm. Uh, yeah, vividly indeed. There was only two or three finishes that day. Let's go to Jamie McBride then, because Kitty's light, you've got someone against him. Yeah, we're keeping the boost topical this week uh, with the Christian Williams interview. So we're 16 from 12 
uh, for the normal fifty pound. That is this week's boost. Kitty's like the Grand National, and we are non-running money back as well. Sixteens. I mean, twelve seems on the skinny side, doesn't it? He was floating around before Cheltenham, around about 33s, 25s. Kills. What did you uh, make of his run in the old? It's funny though, because he was never going to be 33 for the national, is he? He's a spring horse, isn't he? He's a proper spring horse. I mean, the three races last year, the Ida, the, uh, the Scottish National and the, and the Bet365 Gold Cup, and obviously he'd, he'd run well in them before as well. Like, you know what I mean? So it's his time of year. Um, he ran perfectly well at Cheltenham on ground he doesn't like, and that's the problem. He needs a couple to come in, um, uh, to come out. It looks assured that that might happen, we think. Almost certainly. Is he going to run if, it, if it's on this ground? I've heard I'm Christian make I think they'll just go for it. I mean, it's a, Roll the dice. Yeah, go this is, I mean, he has won on soft ground. He has, you know, he has run OK on soft ground. It's just not ideal. Yeah. This is what his whole season's been geared around, hasn't it? You get one one decent shot at the Nationals, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just let him take his chance. Um, yeah, needs a few to come out. My fancy was quite well back during the week, actually, who I've mentioned on this show and some other racing post shows before and that's Mr. Incredible. Um, people Blimey. are liking the Paul Byrne, Willie Mullins thing again and I was really chuffed with what he did in the Midlands Grand it National. A, it was a it was a um, well behaved big run. I thought wasn't it was it? a perfect prep. He's Absolutely actually been perfect. well behaved since he refused. Yeah. Has he's he? he's yeah, only he's refused okay. once. Yeah. I keep trying to think this loony whatever but he hasn't actually that almost done makes him more of a monkey, doesn't it? Because yeah, punters have laid He hasn't it. done much wrong since then. No, really, he hasn't. Placed in a no. classic chase, placed in a Kim Muir, placed in a Midlands Grand National, won't mm. mind the soft ground. Just just remind me about Midlands National for for a, a national prep, a, a grand national prep. Has a horse done it? Uh, something in, rings a bell in my mind that something might have won it and been miles ahead of the handicap. I feel like, know, did Earth not, Summit not uh, win it? No, might not have been the Earth same year. This is but... where we need the viewers, okay? Yeah. This is your Tell chance. Us. Get on Google, whatever you're doing. We've got a show to do for you. Lord Guileen. Ooh, blimey. That was a funny year, wasn't won it? it? Don't know where we won it. Was that the voyage year, Lord, Lord, that was Lord the, um, That was the uh, bomb scare year. Yeah. Wow. The Monday. Yeah. It is exciting, though, isn't it? And we're going to be looking at the Thursday grade ones for you and the Topham as well. I think uh, one of the second races over the National Fence is a little bit later on in the show. Uh, but without further ado, I th think it feels time, doesn't it, to get our tipping pens out. And let's have a look at the first race coming up for you on this Saturday before I go up to Jamie McBride. It is the 205 at Kempton. It's a Phillies listed stakes. It's a snowdrop, of course. And we've got a very well back favourite by the looks of it, Jamie McBride. We have, yep, yeah, very well-backed choice here. It was uh, 9 to 2 when we put this back out on Thursday. She has been well-backed. Uh, but a bit of opposition this morning. There's also been money for many tiers who we are uh, 4 to 1 from 9 to 2 as well. Those are the main two uh, that have been backed in this race. Has this been a hot race anti-post-wise, Jay? Or is it kind of like pit punters waiting to see what's on, basically, this weekend before they sort of get stuck in? I don't know. Uh, no, this was a quiet one. In comparison to the bigger handicaps, the Rosebury, the Queen's Prize, this was definitely a, a quiet race. All right, OK, let's, well, let's see if we can find the winner. And I ought to come to you because the Fav is something you are keen on. Yeah, I am. And I disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um... Saw that this morning, Maddie Bell. <laughs> Sack up on a fence. No, I looked at this race yesterday and I think Many Tears was favourite in some places and Choicia um, wasn't. And I just didn't agree with that whatsoever. Um, you know, alongside Mystic Pearl, she's the highest rated filly in this field. She produced a career best over this course and distance when she was last seen. She's rated £5 superior to Many Tears, whose uh, Irish form, her last win, hasn't actually worked out that well. And she gets £3 from her. So why on mm. earth would you have Many Tears as favourite on her first British run? Well, I'll take Umbridge Don't really get with it. that, because I do like Many Tears. But I, I think she's the improver, and she's got that. I know it is the black type already. She beat a horse that day of Joseph O'Brien's and JP's, who on a day is a pretty good horse, I think. Uh, I want to say it's Did They Leave You Out Too, but it's not. It's, it's definitely it's not him. <laughs> it's something very much like that. It's, it's one of those like did that, names. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, she's a good horse on her day. And I love the way that she was still green. And if there's a horse that's going to be better in it, this race, I thought it She was can her. definitely improve, but from a market perspective, I now definitely think it's got it right. Sure, well, OK. And uh, then all the punters are agreeing with you as well. Uh, it's a debut, of course, uh, for James Ferguson. Kills, what did you like here? Um... Yeah, I was against many tears to start with just because of the penalty, to be honest. I didn't think it was all that good a race um, at Dundalk. But, but uh, yeah, I think the mark is about right now. Choi's is obviously very, very uh, progressive last year. Um, plenty of soft ground form, but then comes out and runs a massive career best on your weather. But I do think Adelaide has got a chance to improve this year. Just oh. very, very highly tried. Just running really big handicaps 
Constantly. So hard to get I mean, right, that horse. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I still think she's, she's, the two Joseph O'Brien fillies in that uh, in that Kensington Palace. One of those should have won it, yeah. <laughs> and the other yeah. one should have finished yeah. second. Like you know, and they, and they haven't done it. But um, yeah, no, I, I just think she's got a good chance. Um, Joseph O'Brien's, I think six of his twelve runners at Kempton have finished in the first two. He's put William Buick. I'd imagine I'd imagine she'd be fit. She was the one I liked the most. I thought at a price that she's got to step up a lot. She's probably in the form of her life. I thought Nola Gray was overpriced slightly. I'd have a I'd have a bit shorter than she's a bit bigger than that in places as well. I think it's a people just gets Gemma Tutty and just looking away from it and all the, I think she's drawn really well and it accounts for a lot at Kempton. The trainer Gemma Tutty, one of the Lincoln Constellation. There you, there you are. Yeah. And she it, yeah. she's having a very good year as well. Uh, this has been knows exactly well what she's doing. She placed. definitely does. Yeah, yeah. Of, the, of the wacky ones as people might think. I mm. thought she I just, she was one of the late cross-offs for me. I'll give a mention to um, Zuki, who Robbie put up in the anti-postman in the midweek, uh, as she Murphy on, which is an eye-catching booking for Philip McBride. Um, also worth mentioning, Robbie had a 25-to-1 winner on this show last he's week. A, he's so. a pest, as they call him on this show, which <laughs> I quite was, like. Right, he, he was about, very good. Yeah, William Hill can't stand it. He did not put up right. some big price winners, Robbie. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely does. Um, it's annoying. So he put up Zuki, so I'll be keeping an eye on her. But I do think, how are we pronouncing this? Schweizer? Shwia? Yeah. I, I think she, she sets the standard and she's got an awful lot in her favour. Um, for me, I think she's in a, a very good bet. Um, it is a competitive race. Several of them in behind could improve, um, but she's got, you know, course form, career yeah. best last time. Um, you know, the Crisfords are in excellent form as well. There's just no no worries with her, really. You wouldn't really be surprised if any of the top three won, I don't think. Uh, all right, OK. No, that I, is... I think it's quite trappy. Uh, before... We go. I couldn't find a single Grand National winner come from uh, the Midlands Grand National until you went back to Rag Trade, who won it Blimey. in 1975 and then won the National the following year. So there All right, go. he's got no chance then, guys. Forget <laughs> Mr. Incredible. <laughs> Mr. Incredible became Mr. No Chance. All right. Well, well it's novices Mullins. and seven-year-olds and whatever didn't win the race until a few years ago, so we'll give it I'm a I'm going to throw Jamie exactly. McBride a curveball, actually, while we're just talking about that, uh, because uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, uh, the Rosebury Handicap shortly at Kempton. The Trainers' Championship is quite interesting, Jay, isn't it? It is, yet yeah. uh, Willie Mullins has seemingly entered more than I was certainly expecting mm. for the thir Thursday card. Uh, he's also entered horses on the Friday. I just had a quick check. Uh, and he's also entered quite a few in the Scottish National and 365. <laughs> so it does look as though if he did happen to win the National, he's got a few plans in place for air and sand down. So, yeah, yeah, he's interesting. He's, he's down to now just four to one chance to win it. Uh, with us, uh, we've still got four Nichols odds on. Dan Scantler thinks three to one second in, and Willie Mullins now four to one. A lot of people looking at that market, and a lot of traders that have thought to themselves, "Well, we're a bit bigger, around about six is five to one." So he's coming in. Not surprisingly, of course, the National is a pivotal race, always for the Trainers Championship up before the three six five meeting a little bit later on. Right then, let's move on. And as, as if uh, by magic, the Rosebury comes up. This is an absolutely blinding handicap. I remember when I used to run this on turf as girls were mad a little bit before your time, I imagine that when they run it on turf. Do you love it? this race though? Because one of my favorite horses used to run it every year and that was Soto Sizzler. Blind. Love that horse. Uh, yes, the Epsom specialist, I want to call him. But uh, yeah, is he still around? Is, is he yeah, he's with Gary around? Moore now. So yeah. we'll see him yeah. soon at that Blue Ribbon meeting. Yeah. City in suburban which we yes. met which, which which whichever one whichever is one it is whichever one is the correct distance. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's mind boggling to try and get that one out. All right, Jamie, you like one in this, don't you? And been very well backed as well. We're all market leaders here this morning. Yeah, I do like Alterovin in this one, and him him and Intenza have really been really really well backed. I mean, they have both got blindingly obvious profiles for a race like this, and, and could be the uh, proverbial group horses and handicaps. Intenzo's 130 from five to one since we uh, since Thursday, and because because we like Old Herovian, um we've always been slightly under, so he's not as bad a result. But he's five to two from 130. It, was this your market, Jay? Did you were you responsible? Because obviously you you like this horse, don't you? As a punt yourself today, how much does a trader have to separate themselves from the prices they're putting up? Yeah, no, I, actually, I didn't put this back out on Thursday. Johnny did. He did this one early in the week. But he, he also he also likes old Herovian. So <laughs> fools seldom differ is uh, the phrase that springs to mind. But um, hopefully, hopefully he can get the job done uh, for the personals. But um, he won't be a great result for the 
company, albeit uh, we will just try to keep them a touch on site. And a reminder for you that uh, actual people do still set these markets at the beginning of this, not just bots. Uh, right, Older Rovian, is he the right five kills? I don't know. I'll be honest, I think mean, the market's become very top heavy and you can see why. But with Older Rovian, he has one for a year, almost a year now. You know, he's obviously had issues, so he's not one for a year. So he's coming back from some sort of injury. He did look very good on the all-weather and was obviously, you know, badly beaten on his on his final start on turf. But it's a long while ago. So what's happened to him? Uh, so we don't know. I mean, I can't I can't back horses when you've got that at that sort of price um, when you just don't know. He came off a layoff when he was winning last year, didn't he? As well, so he's obviously has had his problems. The tongue tie goes on. Yes. Well, that's what, the question I asked. Of, why? What sort of contest was he in last year when he won? This is much. Yeah. Different. And why? Why put a tongue tie on? Yeah. Is it just me who thinks that? It's why? A, why it's put it on to if there's play with your mind, that one as a not punter, an issue before? It? You know, it's novice race form. Okay, he was recording good figures on it, and he could be very well handicapped off his mark. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to see that. Um, but yeah, I'd want to be taking him on. Um, he could be very, very well handicapped, but I just think at the price, it's probably worth having to go with something else where given the actual horses that have been beating, you know, there's horses in this race that have been beating far superior horses to that. Give us one. Uh, well, in Tinzo, probably Chillingham's got some really good handicap form, hasn't he? A little stat, I think four of the last seven winners of this race have come from draw one. So if you like in Tinzo, that will, will suit him. Um, Chillingham, he's slightly quirky, but he's got really good form um, just in some of the bigger handicaps. It's a very strong travelling horse. Uh, but the one I landed on, who is a double figure price, who I think could run well, he probably hasn't got better form than old Horovian, uh, is Cannon Rock. And that's because he's an incredibly unexposed horse. He's a good off in yeah. cast off. Um, now with James Owen, uh, Aidan Keeley taking some weight off. He's down one furlong from Southall last time. I thought he did quite well to win there because Same. he came from a bit of a strange position, didn't he? Sort of out in the centre to far side the track, ground it out. Um, only had a couple of runs. He's now rated 89, which, OK, it's not a gimme, but he's got very good pedigree, as you'd expect, given where he's come from. Um, you know, out of a, a Group 2 winner in Fintry, who was very, very good. I just think there could be some, some scope for progression there. He's an interesting horse. He, 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 I don't think he had any right to win at Southwell. And James Owen is really won showing easily his hand, as well. isn't he? He's he won easily. Trainer. James Owen James is very, very good, isn't he? Obviously, he's got the uh, both over jumps and on the flat. He's got the strike rate of a top-class trainer. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he's getting decent horses and placing them well. Uh, you know, so definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, in Tinzo, looked a bit quirky to me as well. He's always been quirky, uh, yeah. He's a half to Amtiaz. He was a bit quirky. Yeah. Uh, and hung to his left when we were in at Subble. I don't know whether that's just because that's where the rail was. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. I mean, he did win easily. I don't think he was the best class two in the world, to be honest, but he did win very, very easily. Could easily be group class. But as like I said, they're, they're, they're at their prices now, and you know, I do think the market's a little bit top heavy. I've backed two. I've backed Chillingham. Um, Fred Bethel. I've backed Chillingham at a shorter price than he is now, so I will have a little, <laughs> a little uh, top up. This is uh, music to your ears, uh, then. Yeah, I don't mind them. I don't mind them drifting, especially when you know the reason for the drift, and that's the strength in the others Correct. rather than the weakness in him. Like, you know, Glad and you got that point out. He's got. Um, he's obviously got some very, very good soft ground form. He's only been beaten once and only just touched off on soft ground. But he he's ran also, well at Royal Ascot, didn't he? Of he's course. also he's also ran well on on the all weather. He was second last time we've seen. He was half and second to Pridwen. Pridwen is now eleven pound higher. Yeah. The third, fourth, and fifth all have all won since. That's a solid piece of form. Yes, the trip might be on the short side, but I've always thought he didn't quite get home over mile six anyway. And I was surprised they were going to run him on bottomless ground at Musselburgh, to be honest, because I didn't see him getting the trip in the ground. Uh, you know, and I think it might just be a bit of a bonus that he goes there. And the other one I backed is a Londoner. Yes. Uh, for Jim Goldie, former Aidan O'Brien. Yes. Uh, and he's 25 to 1. It'd be 5 to 1 if he was trained by, still trained by Aidan O'Brien. Now, there's obvious reasons for that. Um, but I don't know if you remember, there was a horse called Koshari. Uh, a few years ago, left Willie Mullins and won first time out for a new trainer at 80 to 1 at Aintree. Like, you know, not every horse that gets sold out of a big yard doesn't have a future. And in fact, you know, um, Coolball wouldn't be able to sell any if they didn't. Like, you know what I mean? And he's a handicapper rather than the group horses that they want. So, you know, and his form's perfectly solid. He comes here having won two back to back career bests on the all weather at Dundalk. 
tiny question mark about whether he really wants as far as a mile and three. But I just thought 25 to one, on the basis of what he's done on the racetrack, is just way too big each way. I had a good look at him, because he. It, this is Jim Goldie's special, this, isn't it? And he, he could be very well bought at around about 30 grand or whatever they paid. 35, I think he paid, 35. Yeah. And yeah. He, he's something of a breeding experiment, Londoner is. Because it's Saxon Warrior of Gil Edge Girl. Do you remember the sprinter? Mm. Yeah. The sprinter, the Abbey winner. Yeah. And here he is running over a mile three. Yeah, exactly. So they haven't there's got it right. Slight, there's a slight doubt about whether he wants quite that far. But, I mean, he's seen out a mile two well enough. And, you know, on, on his best form, he's, he's right up there. Do Jim's we think had a pretty the, good winter as well, hasn't he? So. Yeah. Do we think the pace will be fair here with Youthful King and Intinzo probably won't be far away? Old Herovian might not be either. Oh, I imagine Nick's okay. Holly from that inside poke has only got one way right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, think it'd be, I think it'd be solid rather than exceptional. He's got to be there in Tinzo in the finish. I don't really like the 100 to 30, but if there is a horse that is going to be better than this lot in the race, it's, I think it's probably him. Cannon Rock is one I'm going to have to keep on side because I was impressed with him last time. He's just shortened as we speak as well. A couple yeah, of points there. What, Cannon? On the graphic, yeah. Okay, so coming in. And uh, I implore you to go to the trends column. The excellent Kevin Morley has gone for Valsad, who's just been clipped in as and, well. Uh, Chillingham's drifted again. I thought it was more. <laughs> <laughs> the power of Paul Keeley in the market. But you're absolutely right. It, mm. it, we're at this moment now where people are like, OK, we've got three meetings. Mm. Let's everyone hone in on Kempton. And those fancy doors, like we saw in the mm. Snowdrop, mm. are all that little bit shorter mm. than they might be 10 minutes before the yep. off. Yep. All right, OK. Let's move on, shall we? Because there's another cracking handicap at Kempton as well. It is the Queen's Prize I think we're going to have a look at next. God, blimey, I've got loads of memories of this race out there, that is for sure. And it looks like there's been some, some big movement in the market since I looked at it 24 hours ago, Jay. Yeah, this uh, circuit breaker is definitely the main mover of the day. Um, we're now 7-2. to two. We were 12-1 to one after the final decks on Thursday. Uh, easy, yeah, like I say, easily the biggest move of the day. And there's also been bits and pieces for uh, Duty of Care. He's also seen some good money and he's uh, shortened up a fair bit as well. John Joe O'Neill in a Queen's Prize. When I was younger, the Queen's Prize at, at Kempton on turf was often won by a jumps trainer. I remember Martin Pipe used to win it quite a bit. Uh, and Circuit Breaker, he's, he's been smashed. Yeah, funny one. Bought to go hurdling in October, never went. So either had a problem or can't jump. Um, <laughs> but obviously he has promise. Um, I didn't think he was obviously the, well handicapped. No, I, I cannot see, the, just exactly say that, I cannot see that price, where it's come from. Because even even the win, um, the horses have been well, the two that were second and third have dropped further down the handicap since. Um, the, the, the last time out from, there's nothing particularly special about that either. Not, you know, I'm not saying he can't win. I just well, he's unexposed in, he's in, he's in, unexposed. in, in he's unexposed, but comparison the, to some but, of these. Yeah, but the price is wrong. Rafe Beckett, of course, had him on the flat. I mean, it almost makes me think, It'll win because somebody must know something. Because I can't yeah. understand why it's got that short. One of those yeah. horrible just yeah. wins, yeah. isn't it? You know it? what I mean. Nasty. You know, cannot understand why it's that short. I wouldn't touch it with a bar. But like Old Rovin, a tongue tie goes on as well. So your mind is going, oh, what's going on here? You know. We've Sometimes it can work out, but for me, I looked at this race yesterday when he was a far bigger price, and I couldn't have him because I just thought mm. he's not obviously well treated. Yeah. Um, he's been off for a long time. This. You know, John Joe O'Neill, like Keel said, probably not the plan. But my fancy has been backed as well, and that's duty of care. Huh, now, he's yeah. interesting. Yeah, well, he was second in this race off £2 higher last year to a very good Godolphin horse. He tends to run eye-catching races. I think he can flatter a little bit like, like that. Like at Newcastle last week. I was going to say yeah. it was a very good run at Newcastle that, last week. That got me in. He had a terrible draw. Though. Yeah, he and did. It was a funny stop-start race. Um, and I think also another thing against Circuit Breaker, favourites have a terrible record in this race. One in the last 10 years. I, I hate favourite stats. It's just, it's just a you don't normal, buy it. It's just, it's just so what? <laughs> I can't have that at all. Any right, information's yeah. better than no information. Yeah, I know, but just because a favourite's been beaten before doesn't mean this one's going to be, does it? I mean, it's not. It doesn't. You know, it, 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 it's, but it's, not it's relevant. Point. It's not yeah. relevant. <laughs> but um, but anyway, duty of care. Uh, yeah, great form at Kempton. He tends to bring his best to Kempton. Uh, Safi Osborne, I think, rides for the first time, which is quite an interesting like little that. angle. Yeah, nothing against Shane Kelly um, at all, but that, like yeah. that. Jamie Osborne's been in in great form, as we know. Uh, this race is a is a. I'd say there's a bit of depth in there, but I wouldn't say it's you know obviously loads and loads and loads better than last year. Um, and I just thought the way he shaped last time was I catch him, made that headway in between horses and then just weakened yeah. very late on. But you know that he's going to be able to produce a better performance here. 
over this course and Stall distance. 14. He, te he, I mean, they rode him a bit experimentally a couple of times ago, but he tends to go generally back, back anyway, yeah. so I don't think that's a major concern. Um, and it could actually work out in his favour. But, yeah, obviously it's not, not ideal, but if you're on a hold-up horse, I don't think it's a, as a concern as if you're on, on one that definitely wants to go forward. Before we go to Kills for his big tip in this, and it is a big tip, uh, really weak in the market. I'm just looking down at your prices on Sweet Fantasy and Novel Legend, Jay. Yeah, quite surprising, really. Um, like we said, James Owen's got a bit of a following already, uh, so I expected there to be more, maybe more money for Sweet Fantasy. And again, Novel Legend, obviously, he's down in grade from great Group One company last time and is uh, proven on the all weather. So, yeah, a little bit surprising that they're lukewarm, but I suppose. Uh, Something had to be with the money for circuit breaker. Okay, so you're getting a bigger price than you want. Are you getting a bigger price about Tritonic? That's the question. Uh, I've, had, I've got a bigger price about Tritonic than he currently is, yes. Um, I I like him because I just think he doesn't want soft ground. And he's another horse that might be a bonus for him missing muscle by last week because he just has the wrong ground pretty much all the time. Now, I know he won a four run a chase earlier in the season uh, around Wincanton. Uh, like, you know, but he was hammered out of sight by Ginny's Destiny. He hasn't been seen since. He doesn't want, doesn't want the winter ground that we've had. The last three times he ran on a surface that wasn't, that was quicker than soft. He was fourth in a grade three handicap at Aintree. He was third in the Ascot Stakes and he was fourth in the Old Borough Cup. And he's three pound lower than for the last two. Now, obviously, this is all weather and not turf. But his sole turf run, Chelmsford in April 2021, wasn't far off his best form at the time. Uh, and it's possibly the wrong way round for him. Most of his best platforms on right-handed yes, tracks. Is, yeah. And he's also obviously won a run over hurdles at Kempton, won ten lengths um, here. I just think he's. I just think he's in a. He's got a nice handicap mark. This would be it's, very kingy, Max McNeely, you know, and it's Spartan Army et al. What was the name of their trainers to stay as around and Alan King on the flat? Yeah, oh, no. he's got yeah. an exceptional record. I think he's he's one that you definitely want to be looking at. Sleeping Lion, of course, previous winner of the race. Uh, uh, Getting on, Charles but he has run well in the well in the race before. Hasn't yeah, he? yeah, yeah. I, th I think he's got a chance on a low draw as well. Spirit Mixer is a horse that always seems to get backed every time I look at a market. Uh, that's in the Jeff Smith colours, of course. No, yeah, I think he went wrong in the Northumberland Plate, didn't he? Yeah. A strong travelling horse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So look, it's an absolute belter. We're all against the Fav. Yeah, I think so. Uh, at the price, definitely. Just wins. <laughs> Just wins, yeah. <laughs> Just right. wins. All right, OK. Now it's time to switch our attention to Chelmsford. It's the Cardinal Stakes. We had the Burridan Stakes last week, Jamie McBride. And we've got the... Uh, the, the well, the favourite from that has another crack at this. It's Orn. So this is kind of like called the road to Kentucky. Uh, we don't often see Kentucky Derby horses in this. But in the shape of Capula, a son of Justify, interesting. Yeah, he is interesting. Um... Yeah, like I said, it's the road to the Kentucky Derby. This is the last race of the series, and it's also the biggest points um, earner of the series. So it's effectively a winning you're in uh, today. And we are quoting Capulet 33 to 1, obviously, with his breeding. He might be one to take a chance on over in Kentucky if he was, if he was to win well today. Uh, but we're, we're against them today. I've put them in at 13 to 8 on Thursday. Oof. And it has been one-way one traffic all the way down to 10 to 11. I, I just think he might be vulnerable today at the trip. This is surely going to be an absolute bare minimum for him. I'm not saying he might not be the highest-rated horse in six months' time, but uh, hopefully today we can get a beat at, at this trip. All right. Cheers, Jay. You were nodding throughout that, Kills. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This got, is a lay, is it? a lay, this, isn't it? Well, I mean, Johnny Deneen will disagree. I hope he's, watching, I hope he's not watching this. Oh, yeah, wager of the week. Johnny wa stands it by. It is wager of the week. How many winners do you reckon in the last 15 years has Aidan O'Brien trained in the month of April in Britain? It's sparse, is it? Four. Out of what sample 61. Ooh. One from, 20, from his last 26 um, since 2018. If you back Aidan O'Brien in Britain in April, you are skint by the middle of the month. Uh, it's as simple as that, and you can almost tell how, uh, how far uh, forward his horses are with what he says in his quotes. And whenever he said they're ready to start off... Right, yeah, that buzzword phrase. The translation <laughs> is, he's as fat as a pig and will come on £20 next time. Right? This horse is not going to be fit. Helpful. He's not going to be fit. Right? We're probably going to have a slowly run race. Yeah. And he wants further. I mean, if you can't get this one beat... I backed him last time at Newmarket when we... O'Brien has he had, like a grinder. O'Brien has 
um, targeted this race before and had a beaten favourite. He actually had a 33 to 1 second in the race, but he had a fa beaten favourite in fourth. Um, yeah, I would touch it with a barge pole, and I think Orn is an absolutely massive price. Orn? 10 to 1, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I thought, it was, I thought it was, I was thinking it was a free bet each way when it was fives yesterday, and now it's tens. Yeah. I mean, I can't get it. Well, he was fat for the Burridon, He was fat for the Burridon, and, and, and I mean, that one screamed cheek pieces, didn't it? It took ages for the jockey to wake him up, and then when he finally got going, he was really making ground hand over fist. I thought uh, Lingfield the time before looked a little bit headgear to me as well. But uh, I think if the cheek pieces work, he's got a massive chance. You don't worry about John Gosden horses in headgear. John often talks about how we're a little bit disparaging, you know, just sort of like, I don't know, a bit, a bit toffy about headgear, of course, because he came from America where, he, where they all wear headgear pretty much. Yeah, I will not be having a bet in this race. I don't have a really strong opinion. I did put Capulet down as my selection <laughs> yesterday. Uh, and the more you guys talk about it, the more I am put off. Um, still the most likely winner, no matter how much I want to lay it. <laughs> yeah, well, but <laughs> I do mean? think he wants further for sure. Yeah. But those two runs in, in group races, second to Diego Velasquez and then third uh, at Newmarket were, they do set the standard. You know, it? on the ratings, he is a it? mile clear. But I do slightly worry about these conditions. I do think Aidan O'Brien's got a decent record when he sends horses to Chelmsford, though. I uh, can't remember exactly what it is, but it's not a terrible strike rate. But I take Keels' point. And also, year, isn't it? If, but if they are thinking about possibly going to the Kentucky Derby, which they might because he's Justify and they really want to, you know, get people on that Justify yeah. train... Justifies they do stay very well, and this horse really encapsulates that. But they would want him to be straight enough for this in order to, you know, earn the maximum points to I be in with a chance of getting a berth. Yeah, okay. And I, I, if he's not gonna, if he's not gonna win this and go off to Kentucky, he's kind of between a rock and a hard place, isn't he? I mean, he's not entered in the the British. 2,000 guineas, he's entered in the Irish version, he's entered in the Derby, which is about a 33 to 1 chance. For me, he smacks of like a Lingfield Derby trial horse. And I just think, would they not rather go over to Kentucky and give it a go, maybe? Um, and if they are, then he would want to be straight enough for this. I think, yeah, it, it's not a confident selection, but I do think he, he sets the form standard by a considerable way and... Uh, he will be staying on strongly at the finish. It's just whether there's something in there that can do him for a bit of toe. Well, I wonder whether that might be Bracken's laugh. I mean, no trainer in better form at the minute. Nine for his last 21, I think, uh, prior to yesterday's racing was Richard Hughes. And Bracken's laugh went to Song Clue, was it, for the group one? It wasn't a bad run at all. It wasn't a bad run at all. And the, and the form before that, when it broke its maiden on debut, was worked out all right. And Richard's, if, if Richard's got a horse that's going to take him, like Queen Zephine, etc., to the next level, it's probably this guy. And from a decent draw, Finley Marsh riding extremely well. But sevens was a little bit over the odds. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 all, depends on, it all depends on your opinion with Capulet, doesn't it? End of the day. Like, you know what I mean? If we all think it's too short, then you could make cases for all the others being too, too big, can't you? Right. OK. Uh, well, just before we go and smarten up our act uh, with a little advert for you. Johnny Dineen, are you there? Are you listening to all this? Have, we, have you fallen off your chair? <laughs> Can you hear me? We got you. <laughs> Oh, good, you good, good, yeah. <laughs> and look, I, I think Capulet's a good thing myself, to be honest. I do. I, I, do. I, I just think it's different class completely. Uh, these are these are ginnets, these things, against this, this horse here. He's, 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 he's about £10 in hand in ratings. Look, the stable is going well. They had three runners last night in Dundalk, two winners, and the other one just beating the short head. Um, the synthetic surface, like... It, it doesn't put as, as as much emphasis on being 100% razor fit than it does in the grass. But I do think if it has any pretensions to be going to any place in America, it'll have to take out these horses anyway. I think it's two-year-old form against Diego Velasquez and uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, that's excellent form in the context of this. Yeah, I looked at Cube and Tiger. That one there in Good Friday in in, in, New, in, New Mar in um, Newcastle. That was an order. Bracken's laugh is interesting, all right. He, he, he's, he's unexposed. He, He's one of made in the Newbury, then went out to a race in France. Uh, I don't fancy much else in the race. I, I just think Capulet is a class above these. And I know he probably won further, but he'd be out, he'd be ridden aggressively. He'd be in front after last bend and you'll and try and come from behind him. That's what I think, anyway. That is a long hour run straight at, at Chelmsford as well. Johnny Janine joins the show, everyone, and he'll be giving us the Irish angle after we do smarten up, all right.
We're waiting to smarten up our act. Oh. Confusing? Do not fear. SmartView is here to help you. We've taken the traditional race card and removed all the jargon and abbreviations which can be daunting for newcomers. The result is a race card that means making informed choices and picking winners is easier than ever. Our racing experts and data scientists have created an algorithm that puts everything a seasoned punter would consider into the attribute bars you see on the race card and assesses each runner with an overall score out of 100. There you go. Keith Mel Rose, the betting editor, telling you how to smarten up your app. We got there in the end. It's one of those awkward moments where you're waiting for an advert to come in as a presenter and you freeze. Like nothing's going on and you just think, let's just freeze. It's madness, isn't it? I should have just kept gesturing and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, smarten up your app. Smart view is something they've been working on for a long time here at the Racing Post. I think you're going to absolutely love it. Like we love our Irish racing, like we love Johnny Deneen. Leopardstown tomorrow then. It's Bally Sacks time, John. Cut her off today. Hopefully Leopardstown will pass the inspection. I, I don't know. Obviously, you're a lot closer to it than we are, Johnny. But it looked like it was brightening up a bit. But the heavens haven't half opened, haven't they? Yeah, look, you're, you're going to be dealing with really, really testing stuff. Um, the fact that the, like the corridor doesn't be off to, to it doesn't be off too often, though. To be fair, and 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 Leprestown can take a fair share of rain. And I suppose, look, the worst of it will be is today and into into maybe last evening and that. So it's probably be, it'll probably be improving, but you're still going to be dealing with really, really heavy conditions. And uh, there there is a few nice races there. The, the Bally Sacks race is is um, five horse race where where O'Brien has three of them, and look. My my way of looking at these kind of races is if I can't go against the the the, the Ryan Moore one like whatever he picks it he has to have a choice and he he's not going to pick the wrong one invariably he's not anyway okay maybe maybe the odd time the, the outsider will win but you can't back the other two anyway so for me it, I'd be drawing a line through the next two uh, Illinois is his mount he's getting five pounds off deep one he was a pretty decent two year old he he will handle the ground he, he liked the trip. I think he'll win. I'd say he's put one of the better bits of the whole day anyway himself. Well, it's interesting that Ryan's sticking with him, Johnny, because he didn't. He, he stuck with him when they went to France, of course, but on Los Angeles. And Christa Sumion, very interesting horse going forward himself this year. And Bracker's laugh was in that, of course. We'll get handle on that form. Uh, they don't always get it right, of course, but he does look no. like the scene setter. Uh, we're expecting odds against, are we? Well, it's like there's only one firm bit in it. Um, William Hill, I think six to five. They're going two to one with the second string and nine to two deep one, who has a five pound penalty. So that might be enough to, to, to swing the, the kind of pendulum in the favour of the favourite, I think. Look, I know the outsiders can win and, and that, but you still, I still can't get my head around backing them at the same time, especially not at, at two to one anyway, the second favourite. And look, Illinois, the fact that he's stable pick will do for me anyway. And I, I, I would rate him probably the best bet of the entire day there tomorrow. OK, let's bring Jamie McBride in. Uh, this is the Bally Sacks tomorrow. We've seen some of the great horses at Bally Door go on and take this for to take the derby. What what sort of ramifications are we expecting if Illinois goes and wins the Euphrates? Uh, yeah, but I think you've got to go back a fair way to uh, the likes of High Chaparral winning this and the derby trial. I, I think recent years he so it saves his best for the Guineas and Chester more. But uh, this is an interesting little race because we've been 33... Illinois all well for the for the Derby all winter and we've been 40 Ocean of Dreams which was backed into sort of 16 in the last 10 days so it's sort of I was half expecting Moore to ride Ocean of Dreams given the money for the Derby but uh, he's gone for Illinois so like like Johnny says he's going to have the choice he, he should know which one's ready for tomorrow and it, it should be hard to beat I would have thought that's interesting, isn't it? The money for the second favour that's coming. Wayne Norden gets the ride on Ocean of Dreams. Uh, he did look very good. It was bottomless ground when he won last year, but um, I think Shami Heffern had said afterwards, I think he's got classic potential then. Uh, so, yeah, and he really did sprint away in the last furlong. So, yeah, he's, he's a horse full of promise. Yeah, I like what I saw. It's, it's that time of year, isn't it? I mean, it's all about rates of progression. And Illinois, obviously, is the obvious one. And it's no surprise that Ryan Moore's gone for him. But horses can leapfrog each other. And we just need to see how it plays out. But I, I wouldn't have a, I a think, really strong I view. I think we always make um, the mistake of suggesting that Ryan Moore has any choice whatsoever. It's always been a long debated point, this, about think, whether Ryan gets the choice. just tells them what to ride, basically. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I, I can't remember where I stood with it. It's been a long time since I've But logically, I mean, he he's going to want his number one jockey on the horse he thinks has got the best chance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He? absolutely. But as we always say, Ryan Moore chooses, I don't think, I don't, I don't think he does. I mean, remember, he's, he's over here. He's not right at work all the time. Well, Los Angeles is a great case in point of that, isn't it? Christoph yeah. Simeon came he, he will have to be getting the steer from 
the trainer. Surely Los Angeles is the interesting horse here, isn't it, for the future? Because, of course, he, I thought he won really well. Yeah. He was a big prize when he went to France. And Smacked as a performance of, we don't expect much, we'll chuck him in there, Love see that. what he can do. And he goes and for Chester he... or something, doesn't he? Surely. And... Yeah. I mean, it is, it, it, like you said, this is this time of year. Now, we're all, this one's got promise, this one's got promise, yeah. this one. One of them will turn out really good, and one of them will be in the triumph hurdle. You know what I mean? That's what happens. Yeah. Like, you know, who knows which? Let's tell uh, Johnny Dean a little bit more, shall we? Because we've got the, uh, what is it? It's the Red, the Red Rock Stakes, it's called. Now it's the Bally Inch, isn't it, basically? Over seven furlongs. William Miller betting four to one the field, John. Is that, what, what race is that? That's a Phillies race, is that's it? The, that's the 220 with Atlantic Coast and Take Me to Church, which is something oh, we always yeah, yeah. on a Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, are they betting four to one the field? Are they, uh, I, I actually talked to that more might have picked Samuel Colt in this race, but he, he didn't. He picked um, Battle Cry, which 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 was slightly surprising. Um, but I, I, one thing I do think there there has been a sea change in 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 Coolmore over the last, definitely last year, and and in, in parts of of the even the year before, and, and even the, the start off of this year is the same. To me, th th that Moore is on the right horses invariably. You, you can pick very few races last year where he wasn't. And the second thing, they're ridden completely differently. There's none of this mess now of, oh, we'll ride them, t take your time on this. Everything is out and gone, and everything is away from traps fast. And it's basically, it's, it's, it's almost as if there was an ultimatum given, like, okay, if you want me to ride these horses, I want to be on the winners. I want to be on the right ones. And I don't want to be messing about trying to get them up in the last 50 yards, all that nonsense. There is, there, every, every horse that they ride now, that he rides, is out and gone. It's the same last night in... Stall 12 in a, in a maiden in, in, in Dundalk, out and gone, Maid is in front after Furlong. Every horse he rides is in front. And, and, and to me, he is on the right ones, invariably. He, he may not be picking them himself, but somebody somewhere is telling him this is the one to ride, this is the best chance. And for me, it, it's he's unopposed in the line against the other jockeys. I'd and uh, Yeah. I think you might be right about Battle Cry. I mean, he's got the experience here, isn't it? So he might just, yeah. that might just, be, this might be his FA Cup final. He's chosen Buttons in the 255, John. This is a really interesting race. It's the Priory Bell stage. This is the Phillies race. Completely unexposed and is a course and distance winner, but not favourite. Joint favourite with William Hill because we've got a lilac, a lilac roller as well for the Toomey on. And Paddy Toomey's got huge string this uh, season by the sound. Yeah, like Paddy Toomey is, is, is the one guy that is, is, is at the minute is able to put it up to Aidan O'Brien anyway and the, he's got he's got a great jockey riding from two billy lee so that makes a huge difference as well uh, having a having a top top jockey so lee, lee is about the only jockey like, well him and keen i suppose that can really like put it up to the likes of ryan moore so look kitty rose is in there it's it's a hot race it is a hot race but buttons is quite smart and and and, and, and like how good she is is anyone's guess at the same time it is first time out and it's 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 by kingman the ground will be really really bad so it, it, it'd be a hard race to, to, to pin, your collar, pin your collar to anything, I think, anyway. But look, in the previous race, where, where we were on about Battle Cry, I kind of like Atlantic Coast there. Yes, he has one in heavy ground. And the fact that Ryan Moore goes for Battle Cry, who, who has plenty of convictions, would lead me to believe that none of their horses are, are, are anywhere near unbeatable. So I'd be going with Atlantic Coast there. And the other race, the, the Phillies race, Maybe Kitty Rose or Buttons, but but you'd, you'd want to watch the betting for a race like that. Huge yeah. market watch, I think. Let's hope it's on tomorrow. Yeah. Leopard Sound is down, Patrick as well. Uh, Johnny's column will uh, light you up with any bets across the weekend. Right, that's this weekend done and dusted. There's a small matter of entry joining the party again. Thank goodness. Jumps fans are saying because we get some real grade one action coming next week. And we have a little look at the Thursday races for you. Uh, King off of the manifesto, of course. Loads of grade ones all over the place next week. And now, uh, before we go to the panel and get what their heads are telling them about whether we should be back in the chill, the horses. We've seen Fairy House, of course, since. How does this market stack up? How has it been stacking up, Jay? And have punters really been frustrated since that brilliant Cheltenham Festival that there's been no top-class jump racing for them to get stuck into? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, sadly, they might have to wait until final declarations to really get stuck in because a, a lot of these races, trainers are just cross-entering quite a few. And in this race, we've got um, Corbett's Cross is also in the bowl. Looks as on Friday is also in the Three Mile Novice Chase. Uh, I'd expect uh, Ile Ted to Tom's to be in the Two Mile Novice and things. So uh, it's yet to really take shape. But uh, yeah, it is good racing to look forward to. All right, the manifesto. Who's had a little look at this? 
I've had a look. I mean, it's as James said, it's impossible to have a, a strong view, I think, given that so many of them have different options. And again, it's whether you, you go in again with that Cheltenham form. I thought that was one of the, the great races to watch at the Festival of Turners with Grey mm. Dawning and Ginny's Destiny. Just mm. the way that the pace built, it felt like you were watching a real race. Whereas Old school race, so, isn't it? Yeah, some of the other sort of novice races I felt were just a bit sort of Mickey Mouse, the odds on shot walks around and wins. But um, that was a, it was a really <laughs> exciting race to watch. Um, I'd be interested to see if Nickelback runs here, you know, on a line through Jello, who was running on third in the uh, Turners. He's quite interesting as well. Nickelback obviously um, beat Jello, not by as far as Grey Dawning did, but he's not gone to that festival, not had a hard race. And we know what he did on the clock in the the Henry VIII, uh, the Silly Isle, sorry, at Sandown was was pretty spectacular. He is a tricky horse. Um, I just, I'm not sure that a lot of these are going to run in this race, are they? I mean, Corbett's Cross, Embassy Gardens, Ilote Tom, um, Blow Your Wad, maybe not. So. so let's say they do. What's Maddie coming down on at the moment? What your what your what your five day deck gaze looking? I like? might take a chance on Nickelback purely because he'll be coming into it fresh, and I think. Any horse that is trained by someone who's not a Paul Nichols or a Willie Mullins tends to get underestimated in the market. And that's not right because Sarah Humphrey's proven that she can do it. Um, and you know that he's going to go well. But and I, I don't think that the track will be against him either. I think that will suit him. He's quite, although he's one paced, he's quite a fast one paced horse, if that mm. makes sense. That's oh, yeah. why they have to race him over 2 4 and not two miles, because he's just not got the zip for that. But I wonder if you've yeah. just shown your hand a little bit with how you're going to play Cheltenham there. Um, and well, because uh, a lot of punters look I mean, for these nobody horses knows, it. Nobody knows how to play this any year. No. <laughs> because some horses will be fine, some horses won't. And there's, also, and there's no guessing which ones. All I say is the bookmakers must be really looking forward to it, because we've got loads of horses having going to Aintree or Punchestown from a heavy ground Cheltenham, now going to a heavy ground Aintree. And it'll take some doing mm. uh, to run your best again. And I think, if anything, the ground is going to be even worse uh, at Aintree than it was at Cheltenham. Um, there is um, two websites I've just recently looked at. 30 mil over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, on ground that is already soft, heavy in places. So it's Let, going to be let's deep. Let's put a bit of a positive spin hard. on that. Aintree is a bowling I've green, just, isn't it's it? Not, it's not a negative. Just, it's, it's just... You know, I, bad ground isn't a negative for me. I mean, it's safer for horses anyway. Like, you know, I, mean, I don't mind watching horses run on it. I think but the races it's going to be hard. A bit if it's going to be that bad. Uh, well, they take it up at Cheltenham. They will cut up. They will cut up to a certain extent. I'll be very interested if Embassy Gardens runs here. Never had him down as a pop out and out stayer anyway. Are you doing and, this just to mess with my mind? And oh, well, I think he's a king goer, and you've got. We all remember the Cheltenham. You've got guess. two horses going to go off fast in bottomless ground. Well, he just got out of state, didn't he? So you'd, you'd forgive him what you saw, because he had an irregular heartbeat, was it? In, in the, that was the excuse they came out with. Yeah, the jockey wasn't the too complimentary it, about or, him either. Yeah. I think they oh, were very I, weak. Uh, a, fancied, a fancied horse never loses without an excuse, does it? So I don't buy any of that. I don't even listen to it. Um, but he did have... It was in the vet's report. He definitely uh, had Yeah, that. yeah, he did, yeah. Patrick Mullins was the whip. This was yep. his whip incident as well, wasn't it? Where was he, it? He, he went for him a bit heavy. Right, yeah. No, I'd sure. Anyway, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a three and a half mile horse anyway. Uh, so yeah. I'd be interested to see if him, he came down the trip because they'll go hard. Yeah. Because you'll need to stay. I think I'd have to give him another chance. I was disappointed with what I saw at John. Mainly because he was all my bands. Where do we run? But the, I think he he, he was a, a a sufferer of the Brown Advisory for sure. Yeah. Uh, with the with. Uh, well, he also. Know, with the chess game that went on for that. He also ran in a race with a horse that had been hiding its true grade one ability all season. So. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool Corbett's cross, who, who can't have had a hard race. Uh, well, you know, um, you know, when you on visuals, you haven't had a hard race, but loads of horses that do it on visuals can't do it again when they put up big figures. We'll, and we'll these have to wait and see with him. Are, and of course, he's, say, he's in the bowl. Stiffer. Uh, these fences are proper stiff, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure that would be totally brilliant for him. He's, he's yeah. has fiddled a few. John, what do you like here? You've been listening to us talk. Yeah, look, it, it, it's an interesting. Uh, it, you don't know what's going to turn up here. Um, Grey Dawning, I presume he could have an entry in a three mile race. Maybe he'll run here again. Ginny's Destiny smacks me of a the touch of a stage star about him. I could see him going backwards from Cheltenham. I'd say that was his real, that was his real, and not, not that Cheltenham wasn't every other horse's derby as well, but he may not progress. Carver's Cross is interesting. I see him in, in the bowl as well, which is surprising. He's in, 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 in all age company. He's a very good horse, Carver's Cross. We like bad ground too. Found the 50s probably in the two-mile race. Elette Thompson, the same. 
Nickelback will probably be out in front. Look, Grey Dawning is probably the half they have to beat, but I'd be very interested in Corbett's Cross if he turned up here, e even in a two and a half mile race. I think he's a horse with a lot of class, and uh, he was able to take care of found the 50 over two miles last year in Nace. And I think even though he won the um, the National Hunt Chase, he, he was far too good for it. He, like, he, he shouldn't even have been in there. He's too classy a horse to even run in the, in the National Hunt Chase. He, he'd have been well he'd have been well up to running in 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 the in the uh, the Turners or the uh, or, or the Brown Advisory against Fact the Fight. If Fact the Fight wasn't in the same colours, and I think he's a really really good horse, and he, he, he even has might have some sort of a chance in, the, in in that bowl as well. So whatever race he's in, but look at the moment you'd be going with Grey Dawning, but I'd be very much afraid of Car Carbus Cross if he turned up here. Yes, okay. I think a lot of people would be nodding away with that. Right, let's whittle through the rest. Uh, if there's a good thing at Aintree coming out of Cheltenham, surely it's in this race, isn't it? Oh, okay, we're going to look at the 221st, the anniversary, four-year-old hurdle. Oh, my goodness. A lot of chat all of a sudden, of course, about Sir Gino. Jamie, let's bring you in. I've seen him bigger in places. You, I mean, if he was odds on to win the triumph and he's odds against here, against some horses that probably would have been massive prices in the triumph than the anti-post market, what do we do with this? Yeah, it is a bit of an imponderable. Uh, Nicky Henderson did have a winner early in the week. Um, hopefully that's them back on track. There has been actual a big, a fairly big mover in this. Khalif de Burley. Punters were quick to tell me I was, uh, put it in too big at 8-1 to one yesterday and he's now into 9-2. to two. I just thought he was a bit underwhelming in Kempton last time and give me five, did nothing for the form at Fairy House. But uh, punters obviously disagree. All right, OK, so Gino... Uh... It's just hard to know what to make of this as a bunch, isn't it? Sergino wasn't in the equation at, at Cheltenham. It seemed to be everyone's view that he would have absolutely bolted up there, but we don't know that now. And Nicky Henderson's, of course, had that really tough season. I don't know about you, Kills. I don't know what to make of the triumph. I love Madgeborough as a horse, and I think he'll be a really nice long-term prospect. But in behind, I'm not sure there's that much depth. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's not that much depth in the juveniles this year. Um, but I also... So Gino's another Madsborough as well, isn't he? He's next year's horse yeah. as well. Like you know what I mean? Rather than rather than a juvenile hurdler, I mean any other yard would be straight over fences. Well, the running uh, in while he's still a novice, obviously. Uh, any any other yard would be straight over fences next year, I think. Like you know, but whether he stays over hurdles with Nicky or not, I don't know. But you know, he looks for all the world a chaser. He might be easily the best. Now, Khalif de Burley, I definitely would have. I definitely would have backed him at eights. So I know that form yeah. didn't stand up, but I was in the winner's enclosure afterwards and everybody wanted to talk to Paul Nichols about Caldwell Potter. And he said, can we just talk about this horse? This is the most exciting horse I've had for a while. Yeah. Says he's like, you know what I mean? He's had he really, years. really yeah. likes this horse. So, and he thinks they, 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 he, he thinks they probably should have gone on with him last time. Yeah. Um, rather than riding him for speed. So I think more of a test here will suit. You might see a different ride as well. And Mon Morales race, of course, Paul knows that. He's this, got a really it? good record yeah. in it. I love this horse as a yeah. future prospect. Have done ever since I first saw him. You know, he's beautiful to look at. And his Adonis form, OK, Gimme Five didn't exactly cover himself in glory in, in Fairy House, but he didn't run terribly. He probably just ra ran about up to his level. Um, the time was pretty good. I mean, I'm sure it, it was a different day, but on softer ground, I think it was about eight seconds quicker than Sergino in his race at Kempton. Now, admittedly, Sir Gino they had improved a, a lot from the that. The two of them had a hard race there because they went at it a long way. Yeah, but yeah. I think that Slow will and then wet out make, a, make a man of this horse mm. and I think he can Absolutely. come on for it and he will be at the fences next season, won't he? Surely. Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it would be nice to see Khalif de Burley win this, I think, just yeah. in the future, wouldn't it? I think yeah. it would be very, very Well, I, I, he'd be my pick. I However, would. having fallen into the Mon Morale trap, I'm thinking he was the next coming after he won it. You know, they can mm. they can just go... Show a festival winner now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't start. Think. Don't start. All right, OK, so Gina, what are you doing with it? We'll wish you luck with whatever it is, and doubtless there'll be lots and lots spoken about this. Uh, John, just before we can move on, uh, so Gino, you, you see the ball big. Is this just a stinky lay or one are you going to go heads down with? Uh, look, I, I just, I think Paul alluded to something there, there earlier on. When, when the ground is bad in entry, it's really, really bad. Really, really. It's probably one of the worst surfaces in, in, in the whole country, I think, when the ground is... In, when, like, when it's soft to heavy here, literally anything can win. And, and like you have horses win by huge margins and horses run terrible in the place, I think, anyway. So for that reason, I, I'd be reluctant to, 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 to go bald-headed for anything that's very, very short at this meeting, I think. If, if the ground comes up as I expected to do and Sir Gina on the back of like uh, probably an ordinary prep and Miss Cheltenham, 
if if you are looking at really heavy ground, anything can get beaten. I mean, I, I remember here a few years ago, Apple's Jade turned around forty something lengths with Ivanovich Garbatov in, in, from the Triumph Hurdle. So when when those kind of things can happen in, in, in a race course, literally anything can happen. Carl Jeezy is a horse I, I wouldn't overly fancy myself in this race. I'd be I'd be given Nurburgring a chance. I'd say a really bad ground probably suits that horse, and the long straight here give it a chance maybe to, to get organised. But look, so Gina's the horse to beat, but. Would I tear into him at five to four? Probably not. Yeah, I think he might just drift out before we see the real colour of people's money on Sergino. That's going to be very exciting. It's Thursday, two twenty, Aintree. Now let's get to the to the. It's still not the good thing. All right, we've got to wait another half an hour for the good thing. Uh, <laughs> but we've got to talk about the Aintree Bowl, as mentioned previously. Corbett's Cross could take his chance here. Just looking at what JP might have else in the race. Nothing. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, interesting here. He was very impressive at the meeting last year, despite the fact he'd run at the Cheltenham Festival as well. And that was Jerry Kalam, Jamie McBride. And you are, you, you're not taking any chances here. No, we are short of Jerry Kalam. I, did, I think this race is one that might cut up a fair bit. So we have got fairly set, uh, defensive set prices out. Uh, surely you're going to lose Banbridge on the ground. You're going to lose Hewick on the ground. Protector at probably more likely to go two and a half. Um, Corbett's Cross, probably more likely to go for a novice chase as well. So I do think this has cut up a bit. And like you say, Jerry Colomb uh, came out of Cheltenham last year and won well at Aintree. And uh, I don't see any reason why he can't do it again. Are you sort of not ducking this, but are you, th are you pricing this up as if you think he could go race cutting up a lot shorter? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think if you... There is two to one elsewhere. I think that's taken a big chance because if you do lose those five, six runners, then suddenly you're probably betting for 90%. So, yeah, I do, I do, I do think firms out of two to one are taking a bit of a chance. That is a fascinating look at this race, isn't it? And it really helps us, I think, Mads. It does. Uh, it was a belting run, wasn't it, in the Gold Cup from Jerry Colomb. I love Korak for the National again. I think he's obviously got a great chance, but I do think that was a tough tough old slog and mm. I think Protectorat had a far easier race I mean he probably could have gone around again he was a big big fancy of mine for the, the Ryanair he's got a great record at Aintree yes. won the manifesto here won the many clouds here you know put up a really really big performance on racing post ratings I just think he'll be coming into this much fresher and in way better form I can trust him more than I can trust the likes of Shishkin poor Hewick I love that horse he's just not getting his ground <laughs> this year is he um Look, he's no price as well, but I would be quite interested if it does cut up in Thunder Rock, purely because I wasn't expecting that performance in the... Was it the Edinburgh Gin at Kelso last time? That was a real good effort. He, uh, he just looked like a... Everyone had thought he started to get a bit doggy, yeah. if you like, for one of another it was, word. It was a really high-class performance. It was exemplary, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. My issue with him is that you would need to put two Kelso fences together for them to be as stiff as Aintree's. And he's jumping if he hits one. It, like he showed at Cheltenham before. I don't know whether he's hits one. Track, if he, I know it, what you mean. It, it, it'd have to get the jumping right. Mm. Uh, because if he hits one, it'll throw him off his stride. I mean, to me, a horse seen nor is he overpriced one. He runs well. This. He runs well here. Look, he's not the horse. He, he doesn't appear to be the horse he was. Talking but, about horses who hit fences. Look at, <laughs> yes, I know, but he gets away with it and he likes it here. Does um, he get away with it? Give him a metaphorical uh, slap, laddie. He, 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 wake him up a bit. He was, uh, what was he, second in the race last year? Like, you know what I mean? He's going to be in the frame in his 12s. Some of these aren't going to run. Uh, we don't know how hard a race Jerry Colomb has. There's been bad vibes about Shishkin at home, apparently. Mm. Uh, Just that protector so, is simple. Uh, well, I've heard the vibes about Shishkin as well. They're not uh, they're not great. But listen, again, it could be an Aiden O'Brien thing. It could just be... Yeah, yeah it's all gossip. You, you never know. Yeah. But that's, they're out there. Um, he'll just be in the frame, won't he? Horace and will be in, he'll run and yeah. he'll be in the frame. I find it very difficult to oppose Jerry here, despite the fact that I'm not mad about the prize, but he was so impressive at the meeting last year. And you could argue that he could potentially improve a bit off Cheltenham because he had that long layoff going into it. Who did you, beat? Really Who you beat in the race last year? I don't really know. You are. Uh, Is it like Galia de la Toe and horses like that? No, complete unknown or something, wasn't it? I mean, what, the one this race? Not no, 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 you don't know. Who, um, oh, who did Jerry come on beat? Him, yeah. he, he, would have, on, he would have beaten Pegasus in that race last year. He was just, he was beautiful. David yeah, Russell. Yeah, no, he, he, no, he was ace. Him. There's no knocking him. He's a better horse than I thought he was for finishing second in that Gold yeah, Cup. He, yeah. he, he stuck two he fingers deserves, up to people, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He deserves to be favourite, doesn't he? Absolutely, he deserves to be favourite, but has he had a hard race? 
Yeah. All right. Well, we're, again, it's another one, isn't it? OK, what are you doing with this race? Johnny Deneen. Uh, Shishkin, uh, there have been some, some, some negatives coming out. But again, we just don't know really about Nicky's form, as Jamie alluded to. He did have that winner early in the week on bad ground. It's got easy peasy, I think it was. It was ex-Irish, of course. Uh, how are you playing the Henderson vibe? No, I didn't hear nothing about Shishkin, but but like even last year's form, beating the high senior, getting up in the last 100 yards on good ground. And now this is going to be a lot more testing surface here, which is, is probably not going to play to his strength. Huey probably won't turn up. Even if he did, he wouldn't win anyway. Protector has, has a couple of options. So has Car Carbons Cross. Braveman's game is finished. Thunder Rock is a small field horse. He might get that, but he still has to, he still has to step up a, a good bit in grade here. If, if I could pick one horse to back at the whole meeting, Myself, it's Jerry Kalam. Um, last year proved, I suppose, that he can. He was in a he was in a home digger last year and, and came back here and won. He was twice as impressive here as he was anywhere else, and he he, he just gl glided around there and he has form and bad ground. The track is not 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 is is no uh, issue. He's got everything in his favour here, and it, like he is bigger around the place. Like, and I can see why Hills are ducking him. I'd be ducking him myself. I think he, if I take one horse right now at the whole meeting, the two to one, this is it without a shadow of a doubt. All right, OK. We're certainly not getting that at Hills, and they're delighted about that. Yeah, look, Jamie McBride playing this race quite rightly, so he might cut up. Could he yet go odds on? Have a look back in your <laughs> members club at what he did last year at the meeting. Oh, it was unbelievable scenes. Can we now go to the good thing? We can of the meeting. It's, it's, uh, it's Jerry Colom. For Johnny Deneen. The good thing in the meeting for Dave Orton is in this race. But I shall, uh, I, shall, uh, I shall let you look at me and try and work it out. It's not difficult. Jamie McBride, tell us about the prices here. Two Rob Corps horses fighting out the market. Yeah, and they've flip-flopped. Initially, I put in Irish Point favourite. But the, the vibes are suggesting that he might be more likely to wait for the three-mile race. Because we've seen good money for Bob Ollinger. And we've seen good money for Imperia Pass as well. So it looks as though Irish Point might give this a swerve. Uh, Bob Ollinger's uh, really solid. Like, say, 5-2 to two into 7-4. to four. He's your favourite. Good thing in the meeting? I don't do good things, do I? But I think Bob Ollinger will probably win. He, if he turns up here without Irish Point, he's an absolute well, certainty. Well, I was going to put Irish Point as my fancy, and I would much rather see him in this race than I would in the three-mile race. Same. So this is worrying for well, me. But they're not going to run against each other, are they? No, they're not. No, so. that's the big thing. And Jay's quite rightly, this is the elephant in the room, if you're looking at Irish Point in this race, you're thinking, what a run against State Man. He's a two and a half miler. He had to do things probably not ideal there, Jack Kennedy, just to try and get State Man beaten. And it was a huge run. And you're thinking, it's all about entry hurdle, right? And yet Bob turns up, and he has looked like a rejuvenated character this year. And he's just better than the rest. Yeah, I mean, Imperio Press has got problems, hasn't he? Something not right. It's something, not, it's something not right with him. I mean, he might, he might come back at, at, at any point, but at the moment he's a horse of problems and the others aren't good enough. Iberico Lord would, would be interesting because defi I definitely think he wants two and a half miles and he definitely wants bottomless You've ground. he got to be a brave man. And Maybe not a 14. You know what I mean? But... I mean, he was a much shorter price. He was a shorter price to beat State Man when, when Henderson's horses couldn't pick up a leg. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, we're still waiting to find out whether they can pick up a leg, obviously, yeah. but... You know what I mean? If there's a horse that's overpriced, but like you, I think Bob Ollinger, he's, he's almost back, isn't he? He, he is almost you know I mean? back. He disappeared that, for that, three years or whatever, but back. he's almost back. Yeah. So, Mads, Irish Point, and what if he doesn't run? Yeah, I mean, Bob Ollinger's the one to be with, isn't he? I, I must admit, when we were going through them there, I did just start smiling when I saw Langadan in here. Don't. Um, it's, just, it's just funny, isn't yeah. it? It's brilliant. Oh, it, is, it is a smile now, isn't it? I think mean, you've got to just kind of go. <laughs> I don't know why everybody goes on about Langadan as some sort of oh, no. special no, case for the handicappers. Like, you know what I mean? We years. had a grade one horse <laughs> with, who was a maiden over fences. We'd go off at 13 or 8 for a 24 runner handicap chase. And nobody said, how did that get on no. that mark? I you totally I mean? agree. Come I do, on. I do agree. I, I just <laughs> smiled. You single out one trainer for one horse. I to totally agree. You know what I mean? Nonsense. People burning effigies of Dan yeah. Scott. Oh, really, yeah. you know. Galloping well, the shop went off at 100 to 1 for a grade one before he hosed up yeah. in the Martin Park. I can guarantee it was yeah. all the Irish burning effigies, Johnny Deneen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with what he's saying there, what Paul is saying. Uh, I, like, I, I think the, 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 the vilifying that Skelton got for that leg and then was joke compared to what other stuff happened at that meeting anyway. But listen, uh, this race here, um, Bob Allinger, to me, like fellas are saying that he's as good as he ever was. I, I'd, I'd be wondering. I'd be wondering that he is. To me, he was a really good novice and he, he lost his way and he's, he's kind of half back or three quarters back. But 
I wouldn't back him myself, and I definitely wouldn't back him Perry Pass either. <clears throat> I could see something like the main line having a chance in a race like this, or even a Barry Collard if it came back to its best. But Bob Allinger, to me, if he gets him into a struggle, I think he'll get him beaten. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Perry Pass, is a horse with, with, with definitely with, with some sort of issues, and I, I definitely wouldn't go near that either. But I, I said it to someone there that, that he, he's, not, he's not as good as he was, and he said he, he, he's as good as he are. He's right back to his best. I, I wouldn't agree with that anyway. And uh, he's a horse I won't be backing in any race, to be honest, Bob Allinger, including this one. <laughs> I, you're an unforgiving man, John Deneen. Uh, a lot of people saying, why aren't they mentioning Lucia, of course, who was the brightest moment on Nicky Henderson's week, of course, in the Champion Idol, some people would argue. Yeah, suppose, she ran, yeah. yeah, she ran really well. There's nothing wrong with her. She obviously handles the ground. And she's 8-1. to one. I mean, that, that, some people would be saying, yeah. like Irish Point, you should be maybe trimming her a tad. Uh, yeah, I mean, she doesn't particularly excite me. I've got to be She's got slot just, form as well. When she won that yeah. bumper at Sandown, yeah. it was unrateable. Just back on Langer Dan, um, I totally agree with Keels and, and Johnny, by the way. I do think it's ridiculous how much venom was directed at, at Dan Skelton, given, you know... Uh, we've just had a message from our producer to say Irish Point does run. Oh, it's the winner then, if well, that it, happens, it, it, I think. Uh, yeah, but don't... <laughs> If that's Dave Lowe, don't don't, don't, yeah. don't buy it. Don't trust it. This is a <laughs> this is a whether this is an Aidan O'Brien anyway. thing. They're all flying. Whether he's just know, made like... it up. <laughs> um, anyway, back to Langer Dan. I say I was smiling, not because of what happened at Cheltenham, but more because Dan Skelton's known for doing this, isn't he? If he thinks a race is going to cut up and it's going to be a small field, he, he's not afraid to put a horse in there yeah. to pick up some prize money. So that's why it made me laugh because it wouldn't be a usual scenario that you'd look at and see. Uh, a horse like him in this year, great one. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure he's got handicap options as well, hasn't he? Yeah. But it, uh, I yeah, totally agree with what the guys were saying. But yeah, if Irish Point runs, um, I'd wherever he goes next over two mile four, we're all on, right? Because yeah. it was just such a big run. All right, there you go. That's Thursday. It's coming up. It's the first day of entry. It's going to be an absolute belter, of course, the Friday decks coming in today. The nationals there as well. Uh, right. Okay, we're nearing the business end of the show. That's the question, isn't it? And uh, look, good luck at Aintree next week. We will be back on Saturday morning, of course, doing a pin stickers guide, as they call it. That's one, two, however many are in the national these days. Well, it's 34 now or whatever it is. Well, it's 36 or 34? 34. 34. This is a learning game. Every day is a school day, Dave Bolton. And uh, yeah, it's a different national, but we'll be giving you total spin on it. We'll be looking at it. Don't forget the boost, of course, is Kitty's Light. That 12 to 1, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not sure. We can get 16s now. It's live, of course, on the website and, of course, the William Hill app also go and get involved he's an absolute freak if he gets into a rhythm he's going to go he's going to go and have a big say all right what's next on the show that's the question isn't it is it nap time coming up well, it is the nap it's got to be home time isn't it it is nearly home time <laughs> You'll I'll, be, be, I'll be working in five minutes <laughs> yeah, and these are all boosted okay so we'll go to jamie mcbride in a bit but just remind us john you'll be you'll be blown over by a feather if capulet doesn't win the cardinal stakes right yeah look i, I fancy capulet i would be disappointed if he doesn't if he doesn't more or less make all the running well, Hills are agreeing because they're not boosting that one. All right, so let's go to the boost. Jamie McBride, let's go to you. Old Herovian, uh, are you, normally you can put names of tips with the, with the personality that puts them up. You're anything but an Old Herovian, but today you're donning the colours. Correct. Not many uh, Old Herovians from where I grew up. Uh, yeah, we're boosting them 7 to 2 from uh, 5 to 2. Hopefully, this is the last time he runs off 9 to 3 for quite some time. It looks like my nap, Many Tears, is coming in for support, having drifted out slightly. But what's the boost? Seven to two from? It is Many Tears is six to one from four to one. Whew. I'll be making my way there after the show. You're taking me on. I am, It's a good yeah. thing, the punters will be saying. <laughs> I'll stick with Shuisa. Um, I think she's got so much in her favour. I'm glad that she's at the top of the market now. That's where she belongs. Uh, trainer form, course and distance form, career best effort last time got loads in her favour. And what's the boost on choice yeah, Jamie? That is four to one from five to two. You might want to be, you might want to be telling me to wrap the show up pretty quickly. Maybe. These boosts are generous, aren't they? <laughs> they are. Fantastic. You're back to back naps. Kills. You don't have to rush to do it. You just back it while you're on the phone, while you're on the show. So I've just done with Tritonic. Everyone Evans. always wonders what you're doing on your phone in these shows, Kills. It's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah. Tritonic. Things got a great chance. And the boost from fifteen to two to. Uh, Paul can tell you it's, it's 11, 11 to 1. <laughs> As Paul can tell you it was 11 to 1. That's live for 50 quid up until around about 1 pm, I think, as well. This has been the morning post there. We sit on the eve of entry, but puzzles are out there to be solved. It's still a good punting Saturday. Johnny Deneen, once again, man, good to see you in good, decent voice. Unlike when we had you on the eve of Cheltenham, are you coming over? 
Yeah, I'm coming now uh, Wednesday. Wednesday to Saturday, yeah. Wednesday when Aintree's not on. <laughs> Very <laughs> jolly. <laughs> well, I have to get down the day before, yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> producer's screaming in my ear. He's doing every show we've got. Dave, of course he's coming over, for goodness sake. All right, John, go well. Look after yourself this weekend. And good luck with, you, with the punting, mate. All the best. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's an absolute diamond, isn't he? Uh-huh. As you two have been as well. Sparkling away, Maddy Plough. Uh, are you going to get on the app now? Are you beavering away like Kills does on his phone? Oh, it's a tricky day today. I will enjoy it and watch it. But, yeah, I think I'll have to take advantage of that boost. All right, we're going to see you loads in the paper, of course, and probably loads of shows next week as well, I imagine. I never know what I'm doing. That's All sorts. Fine. I just turn up, Dave. I'll, I'll tell you that you are going to be seeing <laughs> yeah. quite a bit, as, of course, my man is as well. Kills? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I'll be here. You'll be here next Saturday. I'll be here next Saturday. Who's your on. national fancy? Is my eye backed. Oh, go on. I am Maximus at 50s. Why? Just remind everyone why that is. Um... Because he had a, a rare nice... sobriety moment at the DRF, was it? Uh, uh, yeah, well, it was definitely a rare sobriety moment at the DRF. But I just like the way he bounded up um, uh, after the last behind galloping day. Champ having never been put in a race whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so I thought, yeah, that's fifty pounds a long price. And then of course he comes out and absolutely slams Vanillier. Eh? He's better off with that one at the weights as well. Um, we, I don't I think we, we didn't see the best of Anilier there, but he still beat him very, very easily. And if you were watching the show earlier in and the season of Morning Post, you'd have seen yeah. Kills put that up on the radio. He's an Irish national winner. Yeah. He's an Irish yeah. national winner. Yeah, number six for Alberti et al. Two mile four for a long grade one novice winner this this season. Yeah. Mm. So he's got class, he's got stamina, he's got no issues with the mud. Jumping can be a bit iffy, but do yeah. we forgive him that at the new entry? If he jumpers win at the new entry nowadays, don't they? Yeah, I mean, a Tiger Roll can go through the top of them, so can he's like yeah. to tell. So, yeah, all right, that's yeah. still to come. That will be next Saturday, 10 a.m., but loads of great content coming your way. The build-up will start, basically, for tomorrow. Christian Williams, of course, is the big read, and at 9 a.m. on the YouTube channel, it will be, of course, that lovely interview that he's given us exclusively. Jamie McBride, sterling stuff this weekend. Good luck with your nap, you old Herovian. You've even got the silks on. Thanks, Dave. Yep, uh, me again next week, so speak to you at the same time next week. Ah, uh, isn't it great? Lovely to get in the insights of the traders as well. OK, this has been The Morning Post. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. This is Saturday. There's loads of sport out there. Enjoy it. <laughs>